Aloha from Daifukuji Soto Mission located in Kona, Hawaii. My name is Jiko Nakade and I am the resident minister at this Soto Zen Temple. Thank you for joining our Onehang or Pari Nirvana Day service. Quite a number of years ago, I visited an elderly temple member who was hospitalized. I discovered her in bed looking pale and frail. Her illness had taken its toll on her body. Yet she seemed happy to see me. During our conversation, I noticed her eyes flitting around the room as if she was looking for something. Thinking that there was something she wanted that was out of reach, I asked her, is there something you need? Oh, sensei, she replied, I wish I could offer you a cup of tea or some cookies, but I have nothing in this hospital room to offer you. I am so sorry. I felt a lump in my throat, for here was someone who was gravely ill, lying weakly in a hospital bed not thinking of herself, but of what she could find to offer me. Such thoughtfulness and concern for my well-being reminded me of the stories of the Buddha Shakyamuni during the final phase of his life. In particular, I remember his kind consideration of Kunda, the blacksmith, the time he consoled his faithful attendant monk, Ananda, and the reassurance that he gave his grief-stricken followers. Until the very end, his life shone with kindness, compassion, and empathy. As you may know, the Buddha expounded the Dharma for 45 years as a wandering mendicant monk following his enlightenment. Only during the monsoon season, when the land was drenched in rain, did he and his disciples not travel. After many years of dedicated service, at the age of 80, the Buddha fell into ill health and suffered many pains. Yet, he and his faithful attendant, Ananda, slowly traveled northward until they came to a place called Pava. Here they stopped in a mango grove owned by a blacksmith named Kunda. Kunda paid homage to the Buddha, listened to his teachings, and then offered the Buddha and his monks a meal. This turned out to be the Buddha's last meal, for shortly after eating a dish, which he told others not to eat, perhaps realizing that it was spoiled. The Buddha was gripped by violent pains and became terribly ill. Yet before he passed away, before his parinirvana, Buddha told Ananda to visit Kunda and tell Kunda that he should not feel bad and to tell Kunda that offering a Buddha his last meal before his passing was an act of great merit, a cause to rejoice. He also said that no one should blame Kunda for his death. Here we see the Buddha's profound thoughtfulness and compassion. The Buddha and Ananda crossed the river and found themselves in a grove of sal trees, as shown in this Nehanzu, or scroll of the Buddha's Pari Nirvana. They found themselves in a grove of sal trees along a road that led to Kushinara. In pain, the Buddha lay on his right side. Here he is shown, depicted, surrounded by many 
of his disciples, by bodhisattvas, by all forms of life, animal and insect life as well. As he lay dying, the Buddha gave the monks instructions for his cremation. Oh, but the venerable Ananda, who had served the Buddha with complete devotion for so many years, could not bear to hear the Buddha talk about leaving this world and fled to a nearby hut where he stood weeping. When the Buddha found out that Ananda was weeping, he sent for him and comforted him with these words saying, for years, Ananda, you have waited on me with constant love and kindness. You have taken care of all of my physical needs. You have supported me in every way through your words and your deeds. You have done this to help me all along joyfully and with your whole heart. You have earned merit, Ananda. Strive with diligence. You will soon be enlightened too. The Buddha, even in his state of pain and suffering, understood Ananda's pain and grief and was able to comfort him. Until the very end of his life, the great teacher lived for others and gave all he could. It is said that he even instructed a passing mendicant, even though Ananda protested, saying that the Buddha was too ill to address him. Understanding that his Sangha would feel lost after his passing, he told his followers to let the Dharma be their teacher after he was gone, he, for he had always wanted them to focus not on him, but on his teachings, on the path to liberation from suffering. The Buddha said, dwell, making yourselves an island, making yourselves not anyone else your refuge, making the Dharma your island, the Dharma your refuge, nothing else your refuge. During this month of the Buddha's Parinirvana, let us all set aside some quiet time in our lives to remember the Buddha's immense thoughtfulness, kindness, and compassion, even during his final days. Thank you so much for joining Deacon Jikai and me here at Daifukuji Soto Mission. We hope that you will be able to attend in-person services or come and visit us once it is safe to travel and once the doors of this temple are again open. We thank you for your loving kindness, your thoughtfulness and constant support. Everyone, please take care. May you be happy and safe. May you dwell in peace, harmony, and may your life be filled with loving kindness. Aloha, mahalo, and ahui ho. Until we meet again, please take care and be well.